Uh, next, we have uh, Jerry and Guabing. I hope I, I pronounced it correctly. They're going to talk about Docker based geo dispersed test farm. Yeah, got that. <coughs> yeah, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Jerry Yu. Um, I'm the software architect and also managing a team responsible for test integration and test infrastructure in Open Source Technology Center in Intel. So the organization uh, I'm working for is named the uh, Open Source Technology Center, uh, which is the heart of uh, all open source uh, development activities in Intel. So we are working on, you know, Linux kernel, uh, graphics driver, uh, virtualization, OpenStack, you know, uh, embedded Linux. So uh, if if you know it, that actually Intel is the uh, top one uh, uh, Linux kernel contributor in recent many years in terms of both the lines of the code and the number of the patches. So that's most of those come from our organization. So today we are going to share the um, uh, test infrastructure practice in uh, uh, Intel Android program, which is also uh, one of the system engineering projects uh, we are doing in Open Source Technology Center. So uh, Gopin will present it together with me. So Gopin will. Yeah, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Guo Bing Chen, and uh, I'm from the Intel Open Source Technology Center uh, as the QA architect working, uh, focusing on the power and performance and also automation. Yeah, thank you. Okay, good. So um, uh, it's good to have this chance to uh, attend this, this conference and to uh, not just share our practice, it's actually a good chance for us, for me personally, to uh, 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 you know, uh, learn a lot of good practices from uh, 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 you workers in your companies. Actually, I already, I already uh, got a lot of resonance from the talks uh, yesterday, you know, um, because uh, we share the same pains and share the same challenges actually in our um, project. Um, so uh, I hope uh, you know you will get the resonance from our talk, and then you know we I, we also would like to hear from you, and then you know we can discuss and get a better idea to make our work better. Okay. Okay, I'm going to uh, talk a bit uh, for the challenges for the system product engineering uh, regarding the test infrastructure, so uh, uh, which uh, will usually uh, translate to the general requirement like a test as a service from the engineering team. Uh, um, so we will elaborate a bit uh, what's our understanding uh, uh, regarding the test as a service. So uh, then I will uh, 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 introduce a bit uh, our uh, test infrastructure, how Docker technologies uh, play the role in our test infrastructure. Then I will uh, 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 talk a bit the uh, test distribution or test uh, dispatch mechanism in our test infrastructure. So after that, I will uh, pick up a few examples how we handle the technical challenges uh, in order to achieve the test as a service vision uh, or requirement. Okay. Okay. This is this table uh, provides a definition of several terms uh, I'm going to use uh, in our talk. So I'm I'm not going to read it. Um, I will pause here for 10 seconds. Uh, you can read it, you know. In, <laughs> then you can understand the language we are using uh, in the com coming 20 minutes. OK. OK. Uh, uh, we start with the challenges in the system engineering project, right? Uh, about testing, what challenges we have. Actually, the f I, I, I would like to uh, correct a bit 
uh, for this page. Actually, the first two bullets are really talking about the uh, uh, challenges in uh, big system engineering, which will involve uh, you know hundreds of developers, engineers, uh, involves you know geo dispersed engineering teams, right? So. Um, the first one is you know, uh, uh, about the device sharing. Uh, we are doing product. Before that, w what we get is the, uh, the development vehicle or you know, uh, uh, engineering example, right, we say it. Um, so it's always difficult, or uh, I would say it's not able to provide uh, the uh, uh, one device per engineer for a bigger uh, engineering project. Okay, so the program manager will always get a uh, much larger number than the program can offer regarding the engineering examples. So, so uh, for that will require us to maximize the device sharing uh, for a specific purpose, for example, testing. Then we, we, we are always required to uh, maximize the uh, uh, device sharing for testing purpose, no matter w what the testing is for, right? No matter it's QA testing, CI testing, you know, DevOps testing, whatever. The second one, the same thing. The first one is about hardware. The second one is about uh, you know software, right? We have a lot of test uh, automated test cases created by uh, uh, QA by you know developers. So the the, the challenge is okay. The uh, it's uh, those test cases are most of those are limited to the uh, experts or uh, uh, owners uh, so who uh, who are know how how to run that, right? So, um, so uh, then we have a general requirement that okay, can we you know enable other users to run those auto test, test automation, right? Not just the one who create that or the ones who are responsible to run that, right? So the last one is uh, do we have a test infrastructure to support both? Uh, then you know we also needed to think about how to. Uh, to lower the maintenance cost. If you, you think about it, if we have hundreds of uh, test benches in our test farm, you, we, we needed to think about the maintenance cost, right? So um, is, this is the general requirement, or we translate the uh, 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 test uh, infrastructure requirement from engineering teams to the uh, eventually, you know, it's uh, something we need to provide a test as a service, right? So we have actually, you know, we have, you know, usually something as a service. Uh, the spirit of something as a service is really to enable the users uh, to uh, easily to do something, right? So, uh, so when it comes to testing. Uh, it can be uh, abstracted to a general requirement uh, uh, we, we name it here. You know, basically, you know, okay, anyone can run any automated test cases uh, on any device uh, anywhere at any time, right? So uh, this is the vision of the test as a service we 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 uh, we, un we understand. Then, you know, so uh, the test infrastructure will play the uh, critical role uh, to, achieve, uh, to achieve uh, above uh, objectives. Okay, before I move to talk uh, our test infrastructure, the, uh, the I would like to uh, talk about the uh, audience of our test infrastructure. The first one is definitely the CI infrastructure, right? So uh, the, we, 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 it's fully automated uh, to uh, to do the pre-commit, uh, pre-merge, uh, post-commit testing, right? When the uh, when the patch come in for review, we uh, the, the the automated test will be triggered automatically uh, to verify uh, the patch is good or not, right? We need to verify that on all the available target platforms. The second one is the, the QA testing, release testing. So uh, uh, for this type of testing, usually we will run as almost run all the available automated test cases. Uh, on the target platforms, it's a menu triggered, uh, and uh, it also can be uh, uh, it also can be configured as automated trigger. 
One, use, uh, one usage it was mentioning here is the uh, uh, failed test cases rerun. Uh, you know, this is some, uh, something actually John and the professor talked a, a little bit, a bit uh, yesterday about a flaky test, right? Actually, we had the same issue. Uh, we have the same uh, problem. Uh, actually, besides the flaky test, uh, because we are doing the product, so uh, we, we also have the flaky test bench issue, <laughs> okay? So basically, but uh, no matter it is flaky test case or flaky test bench, for QA, they will need to rerun, right? So the test uh, infrastructure will need to, uh, you know, support uh, uh, testers or QA to run the field test cases efficiently. Okay, the third usage is developer testing. Developer testing, they will, you know, uh, they they will run the selective test cases or domain specific test cases for their domain only, right? Uh, they uh, they usually uh, test against the, the build they manipulated and uh, created themselves. Uh, the other uh, user story here is they will also they, they, they will also have their own devel uh, developer tools like. Uh, Digital nomi, uh, OMI uh, check uh, or bisect check for regression check, right? Where they will also need to uh, do the testing. So they will their tool will uh, uh, connect to our tool test infrastructure to offload the test to uh, to the test infrastructure. Okay, uh, this is the uh, uh, overall uh, deployment diagram uh, for our test infrastructure. Um, uh, you can see, you know, uh, we have, uh, basically we have a, a, a worldwide single master running as a service uh, entry portal to accept uh, the test requ uh, uh, request from different front end. So the, all the services we exposed as the RESTful APIs. Then, you know, different front ends can, you know, uh, trigger the test request th uh, through those APIs. For the front end, you know, we have several uh, types of front end. One is the CI system, right? Uh, yeah, it's easy to understand. We also, for QA, we also have the web UI uh, uh, portal, well, which uh, uh, enable the uh, testers to, to uh, define the test job and trigger the test request. Uh, we will, we also provide the command line to trigger the test request to our uh, uh, server um, service. Um, so those command line can be, in, uh, you know, used uh, to integrate together with the developer tool to uh, fulfill their uh, uh, test, testing, testing needs, right? To offload the test to uh, our test infrastructure. So the, at the back end, you can. See, uh, you know, this is our device farm, our test farm. So the key idea is that here. Uh, here is, you know, uh, we have uh, uh, we have the test slave host, which is basically a, a, a PC. You know, in our practice, we are using the uh, very uh, small form factor computer, uh, NUC, and uh, next unit computing. I'm, I'm not sure if you know that Intel produced this kind of. Just this, 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 this uh, kind of size, you know, very small, but it's a, uh, it's power uh, enough to uh, to uh, c uh, carry on the test. Uh, so uh, each test slave host will uh, will connect to multiple dots. So for each test request, when it coming, when it, when the system identify the right test bench to run the test request. A new test uh, Docker, uh, uh, appropriate Docker image will uh, will be spinned off to you know map the device uh, to the Docker to map the appropriate test equipment to the Docker. Then we can run the test. That's the uh, whole uh, basically that's the whole idea. So uh, you can see you know for the test slave host uh, there is no uh, no any dependency you need to uh, install. You basically you can just install a Vanilla Ubuntu, for example, uh, the only prerequisite is the you know the the uh, slave uh, host, the OS can run the doc, right? That's all. 
you don't need to any run, uh, install any dependency there. That will, you know, as what I said, uh, uh, mitigate or you know uh, significantly reduce the uh, slave cost when you have hundreds of test benches. So uh, the other one is the, uh, you know, uh, because we, uh, the test farm is geo-dispersed. We have the device in Shanghai, we have device in US, we have device in Mexico, we have device in Romania. So, uh, so we have uh, to speed up the, the uh, image downloading and the other test data and the test artifacts downloading, we have the geolocal artifactory mirror to speed up that. Um, uh, this is the, I, I would like to, uh, uh, for test di di distribution, I would like to uh, talk the key idea here. We, you know, um, we, we, uh, we have a, a, a test catalog database. Uh, we, we, say, uh, we call it a test case catalog or test campaign catalog, uh, whatever, you know. Uh, basically, this uh, database uh, records the information like, okay, uh, you know, um, uh, what are I, uh, for test campaign, what are the kind of uh, capability uh, I needed in order to run this test campaign? You know, like, okay, I, uh, I need a pole meter, right? I need a, a monsoon pole meter, or, you know, I need a, a USB cutter on the test bench. I need a, you know, a IO relay card, something like that. Uh, we, besides of that, we also have the information like, you know, the best case of the uh, execution time of this campaign, the worst case, the average uh, uh, time, right? Something, you know, for us to, uh, yeah, to, 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 to uh, schedule the test request appropriately. Um, this is the uh, test campaign part. Uh, for the device part, uh, you can say, okay, uh, basically we will uh, log the uh, information like, you know, uh, the, uh, what kind of capability this test bench has. Uh, the same thing, you know, uh, will you, uh, you know, a power meter, you know, uh, USB cutter, you know, basically identify uh, the, the capability, the, the campaign this test bench can to support uh, to run. Okay, so uh, for distributor, uh, besides the regular like okay sharding mechanism, uh, uh, test uh, sharding mechanism, uh, load balance mechanism, we uh, the key idea is you know we match the capability between the campaign and the test bench, then do the appropriate uh, distribution, test request distribution. Okay, mm. this. Uh, uh, this uh, I, I would like to give the uh, 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 um, some examples how uh, uh, how you know how we address some technical challenges in order to achieve the test as a service um, we mentioned previously. So the first one is uh, you know we uh, we need to uh, provide any device anywhere right to user. That means, okay, the first one is, you know, uh, for our test infrastructure, we should uh, be capable to uh, uh, control the device and uh, control the test equipment remotely, reliably, okay? So uh, uh, at this point, in our practice, we, we, we introduced uh, uh, a lot, you know, uh, uh, equipment. Uh, one major, the major one is in our relay card. We, uh, we, we create it, uh, we design this board and create it ourselves. Basically, you can understand this will relay the, uh, you know, uh, Signal uh, the device uh, uh, will uh, the test uh, device under testing will be reworked, and then you know we will uh, uh, connect the <coughs> pole, you know, like a pole button volume up, a volume down, to this I/O card. Then you know we can uh, you know uh, we can mimic the user intervention, like a push the pole button three seconds, uh, push the pole button and volume up. Uh, at the same time, something like that, right? Then with that, you actually can, uh, uh, you know, uh, control the device no matter, you know, where it is, right? Uh, 
So actually, in our uh, infrastructure, when you run, when your test request is dispatched to run, then you you actually uh, get a remote shell. You can log into, then you can control the device. Actually, the second one is the state and uh, state transition management. Because you know when, when we because everything is uh, uh, the whole workflow is uh, fully automated, right? So we needed to think about the state transition, uh, uh, device state transition. So uh, for for the uh, you know, uh, because you uh, we will every time we do the test we will need to flash the device, right? Burn the image on the to the device. During that, device will on off several times because the device is allocated to container. When the device is off, actually, the container lost the allocation, lost the connection to the device, right? Well, so when the device is up again, you needed to think about how to get the device back to the container again, automatically. So this, generally, this is done by the UDEV roles. You know, we, 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 we add the UDEV roles on the host machine, which is actually automatically generated at, at the UDEV script. Configuration file. So uh, when the device off, we will remove uh, remove the node in container. When it's uh, back, we will add back the uh, uh, node to the container. So basically, it's work work like that. So I just to give an example. You know, here to you know, we have some technical challenges in order to you know to enable the user and uh, be able uh, to to use the uh, uh, remote device run the test, just like use the device at their desk, right? So, OK, uh, I will give it to uh, Gobin to talk about you know, how we leverage Docker to manage the uh, test case, release the test case. Okay. Hi, uh, I'm back. So the, thank you for Jerry to uh, sharing the uh, background and the big picture of our solution. And uh, I will talk more here about the uh, Docker part, why we use Docker and how we use Docker. So the, uh, firstly, I have a question that how many people you know what is Docker, maybe? Oh, a lot of that. So yeah, it's great that we have lots of the, in, yeah, participate on these new things. That's good. So the, for those who never know these kind of things before, the, uh, the brief, a brief uh, introduction about Docker is that it is the uh, open platform for, uh, for application Packaging, distribution, and deployment. So, the, but what I will tell you that about the Docker is that, it firstly, um, it is con um, compared with the traditional virtual machine. This kind of the technology. So the first advantage of Docker is that it is very lightweight. So, the, for example, in on a typical desktop like the Mac. The small neck. Uh, you, you, usually, you, you can only run like the two or three uh, virtual machines, like VMware or virtual PC, this kind of the virtual machine instance. So, uh, um, if we if you exceed this kind of amount, the, your, your neck will most probably will start because it will consume a lot of the resource on the system. But with Docker, the things will be very quite different. So, you, usually, you can launch like the 16 or even 32 Docker instance in parallel. So in this way, um, you can save lots of money to yeah to have to have lo uh, much less host needed for your testing. So that is the first thing, and the second is about the packaging. You know that uh, uh, for Docker actually it built a, you know the it built upon the Linux, Linux container and uh, so the. So the, uh, it will help you quite easy to package this kind of thing. So you know, the, for, as a de test case developer, uh, you may you may not uh, not enough to just uh, give the, your test case to your developers to run it, because he he also need to uh, to uh, package all of the test environment and a lot of dependent library this kind of thing. So with Docker, you can easily to package this kind of thing to, in a single binary, so you can directly run this Docker image on your host machines. So that is the second thing. And third is about the hierarchy, which I show the graph here. You can see, you can see that Git, uh, Docker support Git like the code maintaining. So we can, with that, we can, we can, we can uh, maintain our code like hierarchically. 
I think people uh, who are familiar with the C++ or Java, this kind of the ob object-oriented programming language will be very familiar with this kind of thing. So you can see that we can have the first layer to uh, 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 people working just on the basic libraries. And uh, this, uh, this, his library, his package, uh, his Docker package will be inherent by the second layer about the, maybe like the test infrastructure uh, guys. And the third layer, maybe the test case developers. So uh, you can you can see this kind of inference by the way. So the uh, and even with the within the third layer, you can also the uh, different test case domains. You you can you can de develop in parallel to do the packaging separately. So that is the good thing that we uh, we why to use Docker and how we use that. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the uh, all for the Docker thing. So, yeah, I think that's all yeah, from. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Jerry and Guabing. We do have a lot of questions, but I just wanted to say I liked how you narrowed down the problem to just anywhere and at any device, anywhere in the world at any time. That <laughs> Thank you. Really <laughs> compartmentalized the problem. Uh, so for questions, do you use any orchestrator, uh, e.g. Kubernetes or no. Docker Swarm? Uh, no, uh, not yet. Actually, uh, you know, the way we use Docker is uh, pretty, the, it's a native way to use. Uh, we, we didn't use those RGSG to, to do that, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Is this available, available for people outside of Intel Group Org to use it? And if yes, then could you share the GitHub location? We do have the plan to think about which piece of the in infrastructure can be uh, all, uh, uh, ready to be uh, uh, open sourced. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the problem is not uh, okay. It's a, it's a, uh, you know business thing. You know, it's a, it's a, the uh, the problem is you know uh, some logic is uh, very close coupled with our uh, the way how we do our product, right? How we I mean the uh, the, the uh, uh, engineering process. So it's uh, uh, really coupled with our engineering process. Yeah, but uh, yes. You know, we because uh, uh, at least as a survey, as uh, we are thinking about to uh, host the same infrastructure to support other open source projects we are doing in Open Source Technology Center, because uh, we have a lot of projects uh, uh, are developed in the community. We we do have the similar needs from community users to to, to because we have many devices, many machines. The, Developer will not have right, so we need to think about how to how they can leverage. So, okay, any questions in the room too? Just raise your hand. What test management software are you using for your test catalog? Uh, it's um, mm, the, we use the uh, enterprise tester. You might know that as the static test case script management tool. But for the test case catalog itself, actually we created a you know, database schema ourselves, but uh, we do dump the data from enterprise tester to generate the schema what we need for our tool, right? So uh, yeah, we use the enterprise tester. Uh, you know, test case owner maintain their, those metadata in enterprise tester, then we will uh, periodically dump those data plus some other data we needed to generate uh, the database. Oh, question in the room, but uh, I'll ask this first. Do you monitor device health, like flaky or failing hardware? Right, this is a good question, because due to the time limitation, I didn't uh, dive into that. The key uh, technology we uh, created for our test infrastructure is, is exactly the heartbeat mechanism. So in the heart, the, the heart, as what I said, you know, the heartbeat, uh, you know, the heartbeat m depends on what uh, you, what you are heartbeat, right? <laughs> heartbeating. So, 
the, uh, what we need is not just, uh, okay, the device is there, LS, USB, the device, USB device is there. What we need is uh, the device either in, you know, take Android device as an example, the, the device must be either fast, uh, fast boot connectable or ADB connectable, which means we are able to burn the next image, right? So if not, then, you know, we will try the mechanism like, okay, can I, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, um, uh, get it back to try to f uh, f burn a golden image, which is uh, we know always good, right? To get it, the device back into good shape. If we, if we tried all the uh, mechanism, all the method we uh, we can imagine, still not work, then we will tag the test bench as an uh, unavailable state. That means a menu intervention needed to be engaged. Yeah. Yeah. And so we have this mechanism. Hi. Um, I wanted to sort of uh, ask about like your experience. Is it like per job you send in like one Docker image with all the code in, and like you reset everything? And is is that the reason why it's like helpful for you to know that the cache is clear, everything is clear? Yeah, that is the that is the one one of the major purpose that why we use this kind of the uh, virtualization to to clean the and and what is the design. cost of that virtualization instead of like it's just a very cleaning. lightweight just as I introduced it's very lightweight it, it, you can you can run on the, on the neck you can run like the more than sixteen if you want and then uh, so in terms of you going and cleaning the cache yourself versus the relying on the Docker, did you see any significant increase in your time, or that wasn't the case? No, because in our, uh, in our, in our scenario, our testing actually happened on the device, not on the host. So it does not actually uh, care much about the how, because it, it cares, but not care so much about the how the host performs, right? Because as I said, the Docker is quite lightweight, so it will, it may be costing like the million second, but that does not care. Yeah. And if you want to scale this outside, let's say, not just hardware, but like, let's say, desktop code, do you guys have any plans or have you guys uh, experienced that kind of stuff? Like, for hardware, I understand it's kind of like what you, it really helps for you guys, but if for like a general build on a desktop, will, will, that, will this, is this scalable in there as well? Uh, sorry, for, so, for which purpose, but? So, for example, like you, can, you can send something to GitHub, and like you know, the build passes for like some desktop. You yeah, know, yeah, just that, is th that will really help. Yeah, that will help as well. And yeah. like, you don't foresee any like time, big time lags or something yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 sure. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Great, and I think we are out of time. So let's give another round of applause <laughs> for Jeremy and Robin. Thank you.